Hey guys, we're Adam and Steph, and we're converting a 2007 international school bus into our dream tiny home on wheels. In this episode, we're tackling a huge project, and it's one we're terrified for, but equally excited for. It's tile time, baby. And as you know, this tiny home was built in a school bus, and an undeniable fact is she's gonna shake and move with every bump on the road. With that in mind, we really are taking a leap of faith and hoping for the best as we use beautiful ceramic tiles on our kitchen backsplash and our entire bathroom space. Join us as we try our hand at tiling for the very first time and finally complete our first space in our future home. My parents are probably watching this and they're like, of course she ordered tiles from it. <laughs> what is that? Tile. tile. Oh, tile. <laughs> for the bus? For the bus. Yeah, right from Italy. Yeah, Stephanie couldn't find anything she liked in Canadian uh, stores. <laughs> That's a long distance for these things. Ooh. Oh, they're little oh Kit Kat ones. God. Are they all the same? Nope, a little bit of variation. You excited? This better work. What? Tile. <laughs> She's expensive. <sighs> and heavy. All right, now that we finally got our tiles in, it's time to tile. And we're gonna start with our kitchen backsplash because it's a smaller area. We don't wanna start with the bathroom because we've never really tiled before and that's gonna be a bigger project, so. These are the tiles that we went with. We decided to go with a smaller sort of subway tile because smaller tiles are better, hopefully, for our bus situation because obviously, you know, you don't want big tiles because they're more prone to cracking. And these tiles have a little bit of color variation and that's why we went with these tiles because we wanted something a little bit more unique and uh, they're more of an organic shape to them. They've got the, the different light refractions to them, so. But that's enough about the tiles, so let's just get started on tiling. The way that we're cutting some of these tiles is with a tile cutter on the grinder. These cuts are going to be covered up by the outlet covers, so they don't have to be perfect. Doing it this way, it's worked so far. It's cheaper than a tile cutter, so yeah, $10 a Princess Auto for three of these. When we started on this side, it was exactly three tiles and we we're like amazed because we didn't even plan that. As we're going along to this side, we are having to cut about this much off of our tiles. So even though we try our best to be as square as possible in this build, you know, everything has a couple millimeters 
off. Can you cut these, please? Thank you. I'm running out of spacers. Good thing it's taken us pretty much all day and the beginning is already dry. So this is our fan vent for our pooper. This is important because it helps speed up the composting process of all of our feces. So we need to drill a hole and we built this shelf, if you remember from our bathroom waterproofing video. We built this shelf so that we we're able to put this like underneath instead of like on the wall kind of just tucks it away a little bit better. So I just got to drill a hole and then we can route out a pipe that goes up and over and outside of the bus so that we can vent all of our poopy smells outside of the bus. Adam loves all of this poop talk. She's not any good at it, that's the problem. Because <laughs> I whisper it. Cutter. I'm gonna try to do a better job in the bathroom. Not that we did a shitty job here. I tell you, I'm not grinding with the grinder this time. That sucks. Yeah, that did suck. Okay, we got it all set up. Let's try it out. How was that? That throws a lot of water around. <laughs> it was just like Niagara Falls on this window right here. So we're working pretty fast because we've only rented this tile cutter for four hours so we're really trying to get all of our cuts done that we have to do with this tile cutter so yeah we're just working on getting the tiles cut and we'll sort of explain what's going on after. So remember when I said we only rented that tile cutter for four hours? Well, four hours is up. I just called Home Depot and I was like, yo, we're not done yet. Let's extend this to 24 hours. So we extended it for 24 hours, so now we're gonna pull an all-nighter trying to finish this. <laughs> so because we were rushing earlier, I didn't even talk about our beautiful tiles yet. These are obviously a little bit bigger than our other tiles, and we decided we're gonna use these tiles on the shelf, the back wall, and the floor and then the other tiles that we the same tiles we used in the kitchen we're going to use on all the rest of these walls you make my face go I really love it. So we need to take a break right now. As you can see, we've got a couple pieces of wood holding up these bottom pieces so, you know, gravity doesn't do its thing and make these tiles slip. And these angle cuts are quite fun, right, Adam? <laughs> we broke, well, not broke, just as we're cutting these tiles, on that 45 degree angle, the last little bit just like chips out. So we went through six tiles trying to cut one piece. So we're gonna get started on the other kind of tiles on the rest of the walls. I'm getting. Can you see that? <sighs> yeah, this is not really a clean job. But now I have proof for all the people who think that Adam does all the work. 
I'm not the kind of girl who's afraid to get their hands dirty. You like my manicure today? <laughs> yeah, how's it going? It's going good. I like tiling at the middle of the wall when you don't have to do any cuts and you can just mindlessly put all the tiles up. So remember this hole that we cut earlier for our pooper vent? <laughs> so this is gonna basically mount up like this and then the hose is gonna from the toilet into here and then whenever we take the toilet out to shower we can just boop disconnect the hose and bring it out. Adam just <laughs> finished cutting the tiles so these tiles have that 45 degree cut here so it can nicely meet up with this tile just like so and then Adam just finished cutting this circle on both of these pieces so it'll go like so see that We brought back the tile cutter that we had rented because we got done as much as we could and then we did like the big walls like obviously these big walls were going to take some time without the tile cutter so we didn't want to pay for that tile cutter when we didn't need it so when we rent the tile cutter again we'll finish the top edge cut the sides that we've got to do still here i can show you better on this side the floor kind of slopes up a little bit so i've got to cut those bottom ones and i can finish this and i can finish around the shelf here finish in the corner and as well as this back wall i left this back wall for last to see how much of these I had left. Turns out we have enough left but I've realized that these lines aren't going to match up because I started on this wall at the bottom, made my way up, and I started on this wall in the bottom, made my way up, and yeah they're actually a little bit off. If I continue with this tile on the back wall you're definitely gonna see that not lining up. This is the only area where where you're going to tell that this left wall and right wall don't line up. It's off by like half an inch. I've decided I'm going to go with this tile that we've got on the shelf and the back wall as well as it's going to be on the floor too. But I'm really happy with how this is turning out. You know this is my first tile project and you know I'm learning with it. It's really hard to get everything like perfectly lined up. As you can see here you know, with my tile spacers, uh, some of these tiles needed a little bit more of a gap so that, you know, the next one would line up nicer. So there's a couple areas here where there's a, a, a little bit of a bigger gap or like over here where there's like a much smaller gap. Not perfect, but I think because these tiles, you know, have that organic, like imperfect look to them with my imperfect tile job, it looks good anyway. Day five. Yeah, kind of over it. And you can tell by my pants that we've been having a rough go at it. Well, it's actually, it's not that bad, but it's just a lot more work than we anticipated. So we stopped our relief cut right here because we were gonna end up with a really ridiculously small little sliver of a tile. Instead of doing that, and the angle on this side isn't too dramatic, it's kind of just going that way and then it has more of a bowl shape on that end. So we figure not to continue the line. Now we just gotta continue cutting tiles for our curb and a couple more tiles around the doorway and then we can return the tile cutter. Yay. And never rent it ever again. Ever again. So we're using these things, you put them underneath the tile so the tile goes on top on either side. 
and this part sticks out between them. And then you put this wedge in and you use this little clampy tool that's on the ground right there and to tighten it. So like so, <laughs> and then the tiles will be level with each other. We're doing this, especially on the floor so that, you know, they're nice and level. However, the floor on all four sides angle towards the drain. So these angle cuts don't need to be level because they come in, you know, at an angle with each other. So they can't be flush. Okay, so as you can see, we have tile all the way up to here now. Uh, we're gonna be tiling right up to this edge where I'm gonna be using this nice aluminum trim. We want to add some gauges so that we can monitor our water system. The main time you're gonna be monitoring your water is when you're gonna be showering because that's when you're gonna use the most water. And so we're gonna put our gauges right here. And then our gray water tank gauge is gonna go right below the switch down here. I think it'll look pretty good. And I gotta pull all this off and do that before we can continue tiling. So let's do that. Now that we have all the grout done inside, we are going to caulk the edges of the shower. We're going to be using a uh, silicone that's made by the same company that makes the grout, and they make caulking, caulk, that is the same color as the grout. So it will look the same, but it's flexible. It's important that it's flexible because we are in a moving bus. Whenever building a shower made out of tile, in a school bus or a van, there's always a lot of concern with the vibrations of the vehicle doing damage to your shower. Now we have decided to take that risk and use regular grout on the walls. Now this grout claims it's flexible. I'm sure that flex means very little vibration within a home application. Something I had to do in the kitchen is remove all of the grout that was on the corner between the countertop and the tile. We noticed just after driving it just a couple times that the grout was actually just crumbling and falling right out of the crack. I peeled all the grout out and I'm gonna silicone that edge now. I've heard a lot around this topic of people using different kinds of specialty grouts that are flexible. I think I heard something about grout caulking. I don't know if they were talking about this because this is made by a grout company and it's caulking. Me and Stephanie had a discussion about if we're supposed to use this between the tiles and if that's what other people are doing to handle the vibrations in a vehicle. But we thought that application of silicone in between all of the grout lines would have been brutal, very difficult to accomplish, and silicone tends to mold over time, and in a shower, you typically have to redo the caulking every couple of years, and if we did all of the grout lines and that was a problem, that would be a huge headache. So we just went with a regular grout. All right, let's get caulking. Welcome to our bathroom. Cut to when we 
just did the skylight and I said that. Welcome to our bathroom! Or before we did the skylight, actually. Welcome to our bathroom. Adam just finished all the grouting. He even sealed the grout so that they don't, the grout doesn't stain because we did choose a pretty light color. It's looking so good, I'm so excited. And the last thing we have to do is put up this light and put up our shower fixtures. <laughs> Hello? Babies are calling. <laughs> okay, we are almost done this bathroom. One more thing we need to do, and that is to install our composting toilet fan. Underneath this niche, I have wires coming out, and I have a little tube that sticks out through this uh, through this hole. And that tube goes up, through, back, and then down outside the bus on the other side of the wall. So I'm just going to use this seal and bond. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna use some peel premium, and that ain't gonna ever come off. But I'm definitely gonna use this to try to seal up the pipe, seal up the wire, so that none of that poopy air smell that's being pushed fill up the wall cavity in this this uh, niche with, is this even a niche or is this just a pop out? I don't know what this is, but we don't want it to fill with poopy air, so let's seal it up. All right guys, after a lot of hard work, all of our tiling is done. Look at our beautiful backsplash in our kitchen. It's looking so good. It feels like we did this so long ago now because since then we've been working on the bathroom and that was a huge project. So let's take a look at the bathroom. Welcome to our bathroom. My name's Adam and I will be your tour guide today. To our left, we have our gauge cluster. At the very top, we have our water tank gauges. Then we have our light switch and a fan control for our airhead toilet. And at the bottom, we have a gauge for our gray water tank. So as you walk into the bathroom, you can see exactly how much water you have and how much gray water space you have left so that you don't run out of water and you don't have gray water overflowing. As you will notice, we have tile everywhere. This bathroom is a complete wet room. We have a rainfall shower as well as a handheld with a controller right here and then we have our toilet we are using a composting toilet in our build we've played with the pros and cons of black water tank versus composting and no matter what you're dealing with your shit so this seems like a much easier way to install and it can be moved so right now it's hooked up to a fan which is built into the bottom side of, of this um, pop out and all we have to do is shut off the fan switch right here unplug this hose and carefully take it out and now we have a full-size shower so this pop out is great because it gives us a shelf for soaps and, and shampoos and then as I said we have that fan at the bottom of it and that's all built in. We have a big LED light on the one side. Right now it's in night mode. We've covered the glass so that you can see we have a big LED strip on the side and that's our solution for lighting at night because we still want to be able to see up and to the stars at night or outside during the day. So we are so excited about having this bathroom done. This is the first project inside the bus that is complete, complete. There's nothing else to do in here other than add the door. It's nice to see after two years of work, something come to fruition. And this is what our bathroom looks like with the skylight uncovered during the day and with the lights off. It feels like just yesterday we were building the skylight when the bus was like completely empty. We peeled up the roof and built the structure. Cole helped us weld it all together. Then we were framing out this bathroom wall and waterproofing it. And now we're 
done the tiling and finished the bathroom. It looks so good. I can't believe that we're finally done a whole room in our bus. It feels so good. If you want to watch exactly how we built this entire bathroom start to finish, I'll link all the videos down below and make a playlist and put them up right here. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mmm, flown. Sitting on the toilet. Sitting, Sitting on the toilet. toilet. Sitting on the toilet. toilet. Then you hit a big bump. Boom! Sitting on the toilet. I just gotta do like, you know, do this six times and then maybe I'll be able to speak. All these great ideas in my head and I can't convey them. <laughs> well, that's a bit better. I guess. Still haven't learned how to talk like a normal human being in front of a camera.